Five years ago I did a video showing how to cut or scribe internal corners on skirting boards. Now for external corners you obviously want to do a 45 degree mitre cut. But for internal corners this can be problematic because if the corner is slightly less or more than 90 degrees, particularly when it's more than 90 degrees, opening up the mitre can leave you with these nasty gaps. Whereas if you scribe the internal corner with perhaps a little bit of back cutting, you can work with quite a considerable increase on that 90 degrees without having unsightly gaps in the corner. So that's all well and good, but the problem is, as my carpenter mate Dave pointed out to me a while ago, there's a much easier way to mark those cuts, giving you a much more accurate cut for your corners. And that's what I'm going to show you in today's video. So previously I marked the outline that needed to be cut like this, but there's quite a big margin for error here because you're marking the curve of one board on the curve of the torus profile of the other, all the while looking down on it from above. And so that today's improved technique shows up well on camera, I thought I'd prepare the board by spraying it with the brilliant Zinza Bin Primer Spray. And the next thing you need to do is cut a 45 degree bevel on one of the corner pieces. No need to do the other corresponding section because that will simply be cut at 90 degrees. And if you don't have a sliding bevel mitre saw, it really isn't a problem. You can make a 45 degree jig like this one that I made several months ago. And what that 45 degree cut does is reveal the precise outline of what you've got to cut out. For the next stage, I use two saws. Firstly, my ultra fine Irwin Jack floorboard saw. Angling the blade to produce a slight back cut, I set to work on the main area that needs to be removed and those ultra fine teeth produce a really nice neat cut. There are two more cuts to make with the Owen Jack saw, firstly this one and then the slightly trickier diagonal, which again I do with a slight back cut. And then it's onto the coping saw, which is another tool you can pick up very cheaply online. Now a little bit of a tip, with your coping saw you should always have the teeth facing back towards the handle because it cuts on the pull stroke not the push stroke and would you believe it when I checked mine this morning the teeth were as you can see here pointing in the wrong direction and with the teeth now facing in the right direction I can slowly and deliberately cut around that very precise outline left by the 45 degree cut looking pretty good so far and all that remained to be done was to fine tune that cut with some 120 grit sandpaper wrapped around a wooden spoon. Or if you like your gadgets, you can minimize the effort by using a power file like this. And that's it, you've got a nice tight connection between the two pieces and tolerance in that internal corner if it's not exactly 90 degrees. So that's it for today, just a short video. Details of everything I've talked about will be in the description below the video, which don't forget you can access on your smartphone by clicking on the little arrow and on your PC by clicking on the show more button. For those of you who have subscribed to my channel and we're hoping to see another roofing update this week, sorry about that, I just didn't have quite enough to show you at this point. We're making good progress, but I've got one side tiled and all the rails in for the solar panels another side to go. Hopefully we'll get that done in the next couple of weeks and I'll be able to give you the final video at that point. In the meantime, many thanks for watching. If you're new to my channel, it means so much to me to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here and don't forget to click the notification icon so you get notified of all my future uploads. See you soon.